Oh, the legendary i5 2500K. And it can't be found now for close to nothing. What are you choosing? 300 grams of beef or a legend? 15 bucks, your choice. Well, okay, to be honest, I'm testing it now because as I found out, 4 cores and 4 threads in 2020 is not really enough sometimes. So, how is it for real? Oh my... Oh! <laughs> well, during the actual gameplay on 1080p low, it was better, but still, massive frame drops occurred from time to time. Moving on to GTA 5, I tried running it on high settings and it ran really well, so I decided to set every setting to very high. You're pushing your luck, pal. And for some reason, the benchmark results turned out to be actually decent. Although, as you could see on Fortnite and you can see here, CP usage was always at 100%. And spoiler alert, you will see that a lot in this video. Now, what do we have here on CSGO? Oh, CPU bottleneck apparently. I guess I can't be so upset since this legendary piece of equipment is 11 years old? Oh my god! Uh, well, I got the first place in the deathmatch, so it means that... I don't know what it means. <laughs> on Valorant we have a very similar situation where CPU was at 100% usage basically all the time and even the benchmark results on 1080p medium look very similar to CS. What could that mean? Because I chose GTX 960 2GB to accompany this i5 through the benchmarking hill, which seemed like an adequate GPU for this kind of processor, I couldn't run Red Dead Redemption 2 on 1080p resolution. Thank you, Rockstar! The gaming experience itself was pretty alright, I guess 30 to 40 FPS does not seem like much to most people, but actually, I found it quite okay. Now let's discuss games which I would consider to be actually unplayable, and the most obvious guess is Cyberpunk. And yeah, as you may have expected, it didn't run well. On 1080p low or 720p low, we got bottlenecked by the CPU, even though GTX 960 also struggles with this game. But as we found out now, 2500k struggles even more. And the second title which was quite unplayable and to be honest a bit of a letdown to me was Call of Duty Warzone. From the benchmarking experience, I really know that when it comes to cores, this thing eats them. But damn, even on 720p low settings I couldn't get even close to 40 fps average and GTX 960 only on 60 to 80% load? Which iOS update nerfed this i5? At least Apex Legends ran okay, not that people care about it. So on Forza Horizon 4 we were bottlenecked by the CPU pretty seriously, but still managed to get these benchmark results on 1080p high and 1080p low settings. And finally, Rainbow Six Siege. This game got optimized so well lately that I'm certain my microwave would run it. Oh. Turns out I don't have a microwave. I guess that's an idea for a future video. So, on 1080p medium settings, this i5 pumped out these benchmark results. And as for the Cinebench R20, I got 892 points, which places it on the number one position. Yeah, since I only started doing these tests in the last video. Now wait a minute, this processor has a K letter, and I have a Z motherboard. <laughs> 